In this video, I'm going to continue talking about applications of second-order linear ODEs with constant coefficients and an inhomogeneous term. And in particular, I'm going to continue talking about the cases that I haven't yet addressed uh, that will round out our discussion of resonance. Let me give you first a little summary of what we've covered so far on this topic, just so you get a sense of where this fits into um, the whole sequence of videos on this. So imagine we have a mass spring system. So we have an mx double prime plus gamma x prime plus kx equal f naught cosine omega t. That's the problem we're trying to solve. And what we've done so far is we've talked about the case where gamma is equal to zero and omega is not equal to omega naught. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little parameter plane here and I'm going to put omega here and gamma up here and omega naught will be right there. That's the natural frequency of the mass spring system which is the square root of k over m. And so let's just summarize here what we've done. We've already gone through the case in the previous video on this playlist. We went through the case of, of gamma equals zero, no damping, and um, and also away from omega naught. So we avoided the omega equal omega naught case, which is right there. And what we found is all throughout here, we found beats. These were beat solutions and beats here. And now let's talk about what we find when we set gamma equal to zero and omega naught or omega equal omega naught. So omega is the thing we're varying and the we're going to just assume that the mass spring system is fixed. Okay, so um, so that means we're actually looking at the equation mx double prime plus kx equal f naught cosine omega naught t. And in this case, because omega naught was defined to be the square root of k over m, we know that the solutions to the homogeneous equation will have a form cosine omega naught t and sine omega naught t, which means that this inhomogeneous term uh, conflicts with those, conflicts in the sense that it solves the, uh, in, it solves the homogeneous equation. And that means that our particular solution has to be carefully chosen. And um, I'm gonna write down, I'm actually not gonna go through the full calculation because that's an exercise I think you should be able to do by now. Um, so what I'm going to write down is just what we find for the xp of t. And it is f naught over, and this is the um, undetermined coefficient now determined, uh, square root of 2 times square root of km in the denominator. So that is what my a turned out to be on the sine omega t, and the b in front of the cosine omega naught t turned out to be 0. And because it's a, the cosine omega naught t is a solution to the homogeneous equation. When we make the, the ansatz for the xp, we had to include a t, and so I'll put that in here in the um, solution that we found. And so there is x, uh, xp of t. And so you'll notice that it grows linearly in time. So it's a sinusoid that grows linearly in time. And if you remember, when I showed you the Desmos plot of the solutions, um, we found that here is a case with omega not equal to omega not, and as I bring omega not closer, I'll get rid of the green and the blue, it's just distracting, the beat solution blows up, and you just have something with an amplitude, a sinusoid with an amplitude that grows linearly, and that's the t growth in the envelope. So the envelope becomes t instead of sine of omega naught minus omega uh, times t. Uh, and so what that means is that the homogeneous solution wouldn't really matter after very long. If we had an xp uh, plus uh, c1 times homogeneous solution plus c2 times other homogeneous solution, those are, would just be uh, periodic functions and they would get overwhelmed by this huge, um, this huge xp that grows linearly in time. Okay, so this is what we call resonance. If you have a 
frictionless system, no drag force, then what you end up with is right at the purple dot here, when omega is equal to omega naught, you get a solution that grows linearly in time without any bound. So that's like a beat on steroids. So let's compare um, this solution when gamma equals zero and omega equal omega naught to the case that we found earlier where we had omega not equal to omega naught, also with gamma equal to zero. And so in that case we had our x of p of t was f naught divided by m times omega naught squared minus omega squared multiplied by the sine of omega naught minus omega over 2t sine of omega naught plus omega over 2t. And this was the envelope function, and this was our um, basic underlying signal. And what you can see here is as w as omega goes to omega naught, this whole term here will converge to that one. And the entire envelope function turns into this one. Why does that turn into a growing, linearly growing function? Because you'll see here, omega minus omega naught, that's going to go to zero. So the sine function is going to go to zero. Uh, but we're also going to go to zero in the denominator here in a, um, uh, in a similar way. And the balance of those two end up giving us linear growth. And that's where that t comes from. So now let's move on to the case where gamma is not equal to zero. Our equation when gamma naught is not equal to zero is mx double prime plus gamma x prime plus k times x equal f naught cosine omega naught t. And with that gamma in here, we're going to find exponential decay in the solutions because we're going to have a non-zero real part if there's oscillations to it. And there's no exponential in here, so what that means is that we're never going to have the problem with this form of forcing function, we're never going to have the problem of the inhomogeneity um, being a solution to the homogeneous equation. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go through all the details of this. Well, we solved the homogeneous in a previous video, so you can look back at that. And for the particular, what we are going to do is we're going to assume or guess that x p of t is equal to a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. Oh, and this is, sorry, there should not be a naught in there because we're going to allow omega to be anything now. So it's not constrained to be the natural frequency. And so when we do this, plug it back into the equation, dot, 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 what we find is that, and I'll go up here to finish it up, uh, we find that the a coefficient is going to be f naught over m times omega naught squared minus omega squared, all divided by gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared all squared. And we find b is equal to f naught over m times gamma omega all divided by gamma omega squared same denominator plus omega squared minus omega squared all squared. And so that gives us an xp. Um, it's quite long to write out, but um, what I'm going to do is before writing it out, I'm going to point out that uh, the amplitude of this is going to be given by the square root of a squared plus e squared. And so to see where I'm getting that from, you have to check out another video, and I'll include a link in the description to a trick for rewriting some of cosine and sine at the same frequency um, at, in terms of a single cosine or sine expression. So here we have xp is equal to f naught over m, and then I'm factoring out the amplitude here so that everything in the brackets is a little cleaner for giving that cosine single cosine trick. So I'm going to have gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared all squared, and all that is under the square root of sine. And then I have to multiply that by, and what the brackets on the line, omega naught squared minus omega squared divided by the square root of the same thing, gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared squared, all under the square root of sine. Multiply by cosine omega t, and then add to that gamma omega, gamma omega divided by the square root of gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared. All that squared, and the whole thing under the square root sign multiplied by sine of omega t. Now using that technique of taking a cosine with an added coefficient by plus a sine with a coefficient, as long as these two terms, when I square them and add them together, they come to one, that means I can replace each of these terms by the sine of a phi and a cosine of a phi, and that lets me use the trick identity to um, reshape it into a single cosine expression. So what I'll do right down now is this amplitude in front, f naught over m times 1 over the square root of gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared all squared. So that's the amplitude. And then I can reform this into a simple expression. The whole thing in the brackets here can be simplified down to the cosine of omega t minus phi, where the cosine of phi is equal to the coefficient of the cosine of which is omega naught squared minus omega squared divided by the square root of omega, sorry, gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared all squared. And the sine of phi is equal to gamma times omega all divided by the same denominator. Gamma omega squared plus omega naught squared minus omega squared all squared. And so looking at this expression here, we see that there's some phase shift 
of the output. So if you force it at some frequency omega, you get a result that is, has the same frequency, but it's shifted, so it's a little bit delayed. And the amplitude of it is given by this expression here which you can see when gamma is equal to zero, it's the amplitude that we got before, right? This is, um, uh, oh, see, I don't have it written on this one, but if you go back to the lecture on beats, you'll see that when gamma is equal to zero, we had a, an expression with this in the denominator, but now we have it smoothed out a bit. In other words, it doesn't have a singularity. It doesn't blow up at omega equal omega naught because this will prevent it, this term here will prevent it from being zero. Okay, so um, so let's just take a quick look at a plot of that function. And there you see a whole bunch of different ones. So what you see here, so this is with f naught over m chosen to be one. And I'm plotting these for different values of gamma. So in blue is gamma equal to zero and that you can see it blows up to infinity there, right at omega equal one and that's the omega naught value I was using. And then in green, purple, orange, and red, you see increasing values of the gamma, the damping coefficient. And I can, with the black one, is a slider that I can move between them. So you can see as gamma goes to zero, I get this infinite spike. And as I increase gamma, it all smooth, that spike smooths out and becomes just a peak. That peak, as gamma increases, gradually migrates a little bit to the left and disappears altogether somewhere around here where it falls off the edge of the graph to the left, the peak does. And so anywhere where there is a peak, we refer to that peak as the resonance frequency, the frequency that gives us the biggest amplitude response. So going back to the tablet here, what we can fill in now is uh, out through the rest of the gamma values, when gamma is not equal to zero all the way through here, we have um, the curves that you see. So for gamma small, the resonance curve looks something like this. And as gamma increases, it kind of migrates over. And eventually that curve doesn't have a peak in it anymore as we get higher and higher going this way. And that is the full picture of resonance in a mass spring system.